Here we have a problem in one dimension, vertically, uh, where gravity is going to play a role, and we have acceleration uh, playing a role, and we're going to use f equals ma to calculate acceleration. A model rocket. Some of you may have launched model rockets or seen them launched. Uh, let's suppose we have a model rocket that has a mass of 130 grams, including the rocket engine, the fuel that's there. Uh, the rocket engine is going to burn that fuel and have exhaust. The mass of the rocket is going to change in reality, but that's a little bit too complicated for this stage of uh, problem examples. Um, so we're going to say that the average mass of the uh, flight is 128 grams. Uh, we're going to account a little bit for the mass of the rocket changing, and this is not a technically legal calculation, uh, but it'll give us a sense of what happens for model rockets that are accelerating. Um, so the rocket engine is rated to provide six newtons of thrust for three seconds. That's how much fuel it has. Uh, and we're going to assume it's a constant six newtons. That's not true in reality, uh, but we want to have constant acceleration so we can take advantage of uh, the kinematic equations that involve or the constant acceleration. Um, we're going to ignore air resistance. That's also another uh, real factor and very important factor for model rockets, but too much, uh, too complicated for an introductory physics course. Uh, we're going to calculate in this example the speed and the height three seconds after launch. So when the rocket engine stops providing thrust, uh, what is the speed and what's the height um, at that uh, time? Well, you're going to see a, uh, a diagram of this uh, off to the left here in just a second as I reveal this. Maybe I'll go ahead and show it. But our situation here is that we have a rocket with thrust. I'm going to work this problem with the positive direction being upward. I would suggest you make a little sketch and you label which direction is positive in your, uh, in your sketch and then be consistent with that as you put numbers into your equations, into your calculation. So F equal MA. We know that the uh, situation here for the rocket is that there's going to be plus 6 newtons of force. Uh, from the rocket engine, and that's thrusting upward. It's making the rocket go upward. That's a positive force on the rocket. But we have a weight of the rocket that's downward, and gravity provides that uh, weight. So I bring in the acceleration due to gravity at the surface of the Earth. That's where we're flying this rocket. We're not on the moon or some other body in the solar system. Uh, on the Earth, the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. And the weight, the downward force on some object, is the mass of the object multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity. Um, notice that I've changed 128 grams into 128 kilograms. We want to use standard metric units here. The Newton is a, a unit that in F equals MA. This Newton unit requires the mass to be in kilograms. So I've made that shift. Um, if we then take a look, this is net force that I'm expressing on the left side. An upward force, a downward force and those two are going to um, be in opposite plus or minus directions. So we're going to come up with something less than 6 newtons on the left side. On the right side, we have the mass of the system. And again, we're assuming constant mass. Um, and then the acceleration, so we'll get a constant acceleration. Uh, at the introductory physics level, we need this simplification to, uh, to work the problem. We're not going to use calculus in this problem. So the 0.128 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared, the downward weight of the rocket is 1.254 newtons. Um, and subtract those uh, two forces, upward force, downward force. We have a net force that's upward. The rocket will be accelerating upward. The acceleration will be positive of the rocket. And uh, it's because our net force is a positive number. Um, 0.128 again. I'm dropping the units here. 
and doing the division, 4.746 divided by 0.128, our acceleration is 37.08 meters per second squared. I was a little surprised at this. This is a pretty uh, lofty number. Um, now, we were asked to calculate the speed and the height. Well, we know the time is three seconds that we have this force available, this constant acceleration. So we've got the time number, the acceleration number we've just uh, determined. Our initial velocity is zero at the launch pad. So we can calculate the uh, final uh, speed of the rocket. And velocity, if you want to say the speed is upward. And it comes up, again, pretty uh, pretty good number here. 111.2 meters per second. I'm going to convert that to miles per hour for the benefit of those in the United States watching this video that don't fully appreciate what 111 meters per second is. It's 249 miles per hour, this model rocket. And uh, you can do your own Google searching on this. This is not, uh, this is not uh, out of uh, the realm of possibility for model rockets. I am, however, ignoring air resistance. In the real situation, there's another downward force of air resistance that's, that's variable depending on the speed of the rocket, so it's too hard to put into this simple calculation. But if there was no air resistance, the rocket would be traveling at 249 miles per hour. Even with air resistance, the speed is pretty high. Uh, so that's one aspect. Now, what about the height? To calculate the height, well, we have a kinematic equation that tells us the final position is the initial position, the initial velocity multiplied by the time, and 0.5 times the acceleration and time squared. We have uh, everything we need. The initial position is zero on the ground. The initial velocity is zero on the launch pad. And the acceleration we know is 37.08 meters per second squared. The time we know is three seconds. So we can uh, drop those into our calculation. You might want to pause the video and do this calculation on your own. Don't forget to square the three. And in doing this, hopefully you came up with 167 point, sorry, 167 meters. I've rounded off here. Um, again, this is with no air resistance. Um, so let's continue. What's the maximum height of the rocket? Is 167 meters the maximum height of the rocket? Well, think about this. When the rocket gets the 167 meter point, is its speed zero or is it still traveling upward? The rocket engine thrust is now zero. Does the rocket stop when the thrust becomes zero? No. The rocket at this time is moving upward at 111 meters per second. Now it is moving just under the influence of gravity, but this speed is positive. It's going to go higher. And how high is it going to go? Well, we need to find the time up to this maximum height. To There's more than one way to do this calculation, but the way I'm going to do it is to find the time to the maximum height. <coughs> and that would be using this equation, final velocity equals initial velocity for this time interval, plus acceleration multiplied by time. We are in a constant acceleration uh, situation now. The acceleration now is going to be the acceleration due to gravity, but it is constant for the heights that are being talked about here. Um, so at the maximum height, what's the rocket do? It stops going up and starts to come back down. At the maximum height, this final velocity is zero. We know the initial velocity at the start of this new time interval. This is not the time interval from zero to three seconds. That had a certain acceleration value. We're now in a time interval where the acceleration is minus 9.8 meters per second squared. You, doing the way the calculation the way I'm proceeding, you must do uh, a separate calculation. I can't find the maximum height by including both the time when we're accelerating and the time when we're acceleration is just due to gravity. <clears throat> so um, we can, I'm going to call this time interval B, and the second part of the motion, time interval A will be the three seconds till the rocket fuel is used up. Time interval B starts at three seconds into the flight and goes to the maximum height. We have all the information we need to calculate time B. Uh, if I move the 111 off to the left side, it's minus 
divided by minus 9.8, and I end up with 11.35 seconds. This is in addition to the three seconds of the rocket-powered flight. Uh, so it, the total time is 14.35 seconds, but we're not asked that. We're asked what's the height. During this uh, motion upward, again, we can calculate the final position equals initial position, initial velocity multiplied by time, and one-half a t squared. I want you to think, what is the initial position for this calculation for this time b? Time b is the time after the rocket engine stops providing thrust. What is the initial velocity for this calculation from uh, when the rocket stops thrusting up to the height? And what time number should we use? Should we use 11.35 or should we use 14.35 or should we use 3? You might want to pause the video and think about what numbers are you going to be putting in here. Welcome back. I hope you chose the numbers at the end of the three second time interval. We're doing a calculation now from when the rocket engine stopped. The rocket was at a position 167 meters above the ground. The velocity of the rocket, 111.2 meters per second, a positive number, it's going upward. We know the elapsed time now from this uh, stopping point of the rocket thrust up to the top of the motion. So I use 11.35 seconds. I do not use 14.35 seconds. That length of time has two different accelerations in the one in that 14 second time span. It's illegal to do use this equation when the acceleration changes. The acceleration must be constant. So we use 11.35 seconds and during this 11.35 seconds, the only acceleration is the acceleration due to gravity. It is downward. In my problem, I chose up to be the positive direction. The acceleration of gravity is pointed towards the Earth. Things accelerate towards the Earth when they're dropped. Uh, so that's a negative number. So 1 half a t squared, again, the time is the 11.35. It's not 14. It's not 3. It's the time number from when the rocket stops thrusting to when the rocket reaches its highest point. And you could pause and use your calculator. Welcome back. I came up with a, a position now of 798 meters for the uh, rocket. Where is this? Is this 798 meters above the ground? Or is it 798 meters above the point where the rocket engine stopped thrusting? It's 798 meters above the ground. I'm using zero for the ground level. The 167 meters is where the rocket was when the rocket stopped thrusting. And uh, so 798, that's the final answer. That's the maximum height of the rocket. Now, what's the speed of the rocket when it comes back down and it hits the Earth? Um, so it gets to the top of its motion. The velocity is zero. Does the rocket come back down? after its velocity is zero? Yes, at the top of the motion, the velocity is zero for only an instant. We have the acceleration of gravity acting on the rocket. It is going, it is going to come back down. It's going to fall towards the Earth. And I'm going to use another kinematic equation here. Uh, the final velocity squared equals the initial velocity squared plus 2 times acceleration times the distance traveled in a straight line. This is uh, working just in one dimension, and I use y as the uh, distance traveled in the y direction, the vertical direction. So our calculation starts at the maximum height. What are these, which of these numbers do you know at this position of the maximum height? Well, we know that the initial velocity for this calculation is zero. We're working the problem now only from the time when the rocket is at the maximum height to the time the rocket hits the ground. So at the maximum height, the initial velocity for this calculation is a zero. The acceleration, should you use plus 9.8 or minus 9.8 meters per second squared? Again, I'm working this problem with up direction being positive. The acceleration due to gravity is a negative, so we're going to put a minus 
9.8 meters per second squared there. The y number, the distance or the uh, position where we are at the end of the motion, is that going to be plus 798 or minus 798? Well, this problem starts at the top of the motion. That's where my y coordinate is 0 now. Uh, before, the y was 0 at the ground level. But now, I'm making the y 0 at the top of the motion. And the rocket is going to travel down 798 meters. That's a negative number. <coughs> and you would uh, quickly find that you've made an error if you don't have if you only have one of these as a negative, because you end up taking a square root in your calculator report, that's an error to take square root of a negative number. So we need these both negative to cancel off the negative sign. And you should pause and do the calculation. I came up with v squared is 15,640 meters squared over second squared. Notice the meters here times the meters here produces the meters squared. When we take square root, we'll end up with meters per second. And the number I came up with was 125 meters per second. This is with no air resistance. Okay, no air resistance. So there we have uh, our calculations involving model rocketry. Um, I hope uh, if you, necessary you pause and uh, go back to any point where you might have a question. As you work problems, make a sketch, label which way is positive, think about your equations, and in these kinematic equations, be sure to only use uh, a time span where the acceleration is constant. If the acceleration is changing, you will have to use more than one of these uh, equations uh, with the appropriate time number for each time span where the acceleration is constant. If you'd like to see some more of these uh, sample physics problems, and astronomy problems as well. They're indexed at two websites. Um, I don't collect any personal information. There's no registration. I don't get your email. It's free. <coughs> and the uh, index, the sites here, have direct links to the YouTube videos to make it easy for you to, uh, to play them. I hope you uh, keep practicing physics problems.